Donald Trump rattled the relationship between China and the U.S. when he spoke with the leader of Taiwan, breaking with decades of U.S. diplomacy. Now he's doubling down on that decision. Back to our exclusive interview with the president-elect. You recently took a call from the president of Taiwan. And on the Sunday shows, including ours, some of your top eight said, oh, it was just a congratulatory call. But the next day, some of your top eight said, no, in fact, you had been thinking about this for weeks in advance to send a message. It's so all what, wrong. So it's which all is wrong. it? No, no, it's all wrong. Not weeks. I took a call. I heard the call was coming probably an hour or two before. I fully understand the one China policy, but I don't know why we have to be bound by a one China policy unless we make a deal with China, having to do with other things, including trade. I mean, look, we're being hurt very badly by China with devaluation, with uh, taxing us heavy at the borders when we don't tax them, with building a massive fortress in the middle of the South China Sea, which they shouldn't be doing. and. Frankly, with not helping us at all with North Korea. You have North Korea, you have nuclear weapons, and China could solve that problem, and they're not helping us at all. So I don't want China dictating to me. And this was a call put into me. I didn't make the call. And it was a call, very short call, saying, Congratulations, sir, on the victory. It was a very nice call. Short. And why should some other nation be able to say, I can't take a call? I think it actually would have been very disrespectful to be honest with you, I'm not taking it. You recently intervened with Carrier to save about a thousand jobs right. from moving to Mexico. And you've said at one of your rallies, you're asking for a list of 10 companies that are thinking of outsourcing so you can call them as well. Should the President of the United States be calling companies? I mean, how would you have felt if Barack Obama gets on the phone and says, hey, Donald, Here's how I want you to do business. I would have been honored. So let me just tell you. Honored? I don't have to do it myself. I have great people. We have top, top smart people. But it's so easy to do. And we're going to have to impose a major tax on companies that leave, build their product, and think they're going to sell it right through our border like we're a bunch of jerks. But we're going to have to free market, sir. That, that is, that's not free market when they go out and they move and they sell back into our country. But that's the free market. They made a decision. It makes... No, that's the, that's the dumb market, okay? That's the dumb market. I'm a big free trader. But it has to be fair. So what's happened is we have lost, over a period of years, short years, 70,000 factories in this country. Chris, 70 thousand. I always say to people, I think it's a typo. How could it be so many? 70,000 factories. We're being stripped of our workers. We're being, I mean, we're being stripped of our jobs. Our good jobs are really going down. And we've got to stop it. And the only way you're going to stop it, the nice way, is we're reducing taxes very substantially for companies, so they're not going to have to leave because of taxes. We'll be reducing regulations. Now, those are the nice ways of doing it, and everyone loves it, and everyone's happy. Businesses way down, also middle class, but way down, okay, taxes and regulations. But when a company wants to move to Mexico or another company or another country and they want to build a nice, beautiful factory and they want to sell their product through our border, no tax, and the people that all got fired, so we end up with unemployment and debt, and they end up with jobs and factories and all of the other things, it's not going to happen that way. And the way you stop it, is by imposing a tax. Now, I've come up with a number of 35 percent. There is no tax if you don't leave. There is no tax at all. You know, people are saying they don't understand really what I'm doing. I read the Wall Street Journal the other day. Honestly, their editorial board doesn't get it. I don't think they understand business. I don't think the Wall Street Journal editorial board, and I know some of them, they're really nice. I don't think they understand business. They don't understand what I'm saying. There's a 35% tax, but there is no tax if you don't move. But if you move your plant or factory and you want to sell back into our country, you fire all your people, there are going to be consequences for that. There are going to be consequences. You know what's going to happen? What? I'll tell you. Yeah. Nobody's going to move. They're not going to move. They're not going to leave. They're going to stay here. You're keeping your stake in Celebrity Apprentice. Uh, according to the New York Times, you're going to shift operations, but you're going to keep your stake in your real estate business. 
Well, essentially, I'm not going to have anything to do with the management. I know, but isn't that a huge conflict of interest, sir? When I ran, everybody knew that I, I was a very big owner of real estate all over the world. I mean, I'm not going to have anything to do with the management of the company. You know, when you sell real estate, that's not like going out and selling a stock. That takes a long time. It takes, I have, I'm going to have nothing to do with it. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't care about it anymore. I'm so focused on doing a great job as president. I don't care if our rent roll goes up a little bit or down. I couldn't care less. But you have my, my executives will run it with my children. It's a big company. It's a great company. But I'm going to have nothing to do with management. But you I, hammered Hillary Clinton over the Clinton Foundation and paid. Well, that's different because and, wait, wait, she's and, taken in massive amounts of money from foreign countries and other and things. And paid a play. It is impossible to figure out where the Clinton Foundation ends and the State Department begins. It is now abundantly clear that the Clintons set up a business to profit from public office. This well, is wait different. a minute. You're going to be making massive amount of, no, uh, of money. If, if, wait, wait, what, wait. if somebody rents Con a, ho wait, a hotel foreign room? Foreign countries are already booking events at the Trump Hotel in D.C. Uh, you've got business operations, deals with foreign countries. Chris, this mean, is all this stuff on, this stuff. Isn't this on steroids? No. That they, no. Foreign interests trying to curry favor with the president of the United States. If I were going to do new deals right now, I am turning down billions of dollars of deals. I will tell you, uh, running for president, the money I spent is peanuts compared to the money I won't make. And that's okay. Because this is so important. What I'm doing is so important. This is a calling. This is, so, this is a movement. It's not just me. It's millions and millions of people. And you got to see it firsthand. I'm not going to be doing deals at all. Now, that would be, I don't even know if that's a conflict. I mean, I, I have the right to do it. You know, under the law, I have the right to do it. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to do deals uh, because I want to focus on this. But by my not doing deals, I turned down seven deals with one big player, great player, last week because I thought it could be perceived as a conflict of interest. But it was, it was probably it? a billion dollars of deals that I turned down. But if your kids do it, it, isn't it going to be the same? No, thing? it's totally different. They're not, they're not, they're not president. I mean, they're not president, but they're not going to do it either. Oh, I see what you're getting at. No, they're not making deals either for my company. Right. They're not making deals. And they're going to run my company. I have a lot of property and great stuff. They're going to run it. We're wow. going to run it. Hopefully, they're going to run it properly. I'm sure they're going to run it properly. But I'm not going to do deals. And I think, you know, I think that's going to be good. How many times have you spoken to Barack Obama since you were in the Oval Office with him? What do you guys talk about? And has he persuaded you on any of his policies? So we disagree on things, but we haven't really discussed things that we disagree on. I've spoken to him another time. Uh, I'm going to be speaking to him today, actually. Uh, he has treated me really well. He's made us feel very welcome. But on the Iran nuclear deal, relations with Cuba? Well, I, I don't want to tell you what we discuss, but, uh, and some of it, I've agreed with him. A lot, of, you know, people don't read about the stuff that you agree on. But there are things that we disagree on, and probably never going to be able to change that. But we do get along well. I, I'm surprised at how well we get along, and I think he might say the same thing, and I think you're seeing that from him. Mr. President-elect, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Thank you very much.